Good afternoon, my friends. Welcome back to another episode of Mastering Diagnostics with yours truly, Brandon Steckler, the Technical Editor of Motor Age Magazine. And this episode, I like to call the wise guy, because that's me. Now, I don't mean it in the fashion that I'm a smart ass. Well, I am, but that's not what I'm talking about here. When I say wise guy, I mean, I ask why. Why, 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 why? I usually ask why five times because I find typically, if I ask why five times and pursue those questions, I usually get to the root cause of a fault. And that's what today's episode is all about, applying this logical approach to TPMS systems. Now, look, TPMS has been around for years, ever since the issues we had with underinflated tires uh, causing vehicle rollovers and such unfortunate situations. Um, manufacturers realized that unless the customers knew the tires were inflated properly, the chances of them maintaining that are a lot less. Enter stage left TPMS systems. Now, TPMS systems are configured a few different ways, mainly directly and indirectly. And when we are talking about indirect systems, when TPMS was in its infancy, we were talking about physics, the rotational speed of the tires. And here's what I mean by that. When we inflate a tire to a certain pounds per square inch, so to speak, a certain pressure, uh, that tire's circumference is a certain size. If we inflate that tire further, the tire becomes larger. And because of its larger circumference, its rotational speed for any given distance is going to slow down. And on the flip side, if the tire was underinflated, the tire becomes smaller. And to travel that same distance, it has to rotate further. So its rotational speed is going to be faster. Now, there are other factors that come into play like steering angle and such, um, but staying focused on TPMS sensors and systems themselves. I next want to talk about direct sensors, and that's probably the most common, especially nowadays. The direct sensors have a sensor affixed to the wheel in some way, shape, or form, typically mounted at the valve stem or perhaps with a belt strapped to the inside of the wheel. And the design of that sensor allows it to transmit a signal at certain times to a receiving computer that processes that radio frequency transmitted signal and converts it to a couple of different pieces of information. For one, the tire sensor ID, a unique code, alphanumeric code, that the TPMS sensor itself transmits when it's being pinged. Second, tire temperature. And third, the pressure itself. And finally, in some instances, the tire pressure sensor will offer a location. But that's not typically derived from the sensor signal itself, but more so the process in which we program, the order in which the sensors are programmed. So the one thing many customers and still some technicians take for granted is the illumination of the TPMS warning indicator in some situations or configurations, that TPMS warning indicator could mean several things. If the warning indicator is illuminated solidly, it could indicate a DTC. If that warning lamp is flashing, it could indicate that the system is in a process of learning. And in some configurations, there are separate warning indicators, one to indicate a general fault, much like a malfunction indicator lamp for emissions purposes or a check engine light, and another to simply indicate there's nothing wrong with the system's functionality, but a tire pressure is indeed low. And it's very obvious that we have to identify which situation is occurring on which vehicles first. So the indicator of the light isn't necessarily a fault. It could simply mean that the system is working properly but tire pressure is indeed low. So it goes without saying that further analysis is obviously required. Now, one thing that is very important that, again, many technicians overlook is the fact that not every TPMS system is configured the same. And of course, we just talked about indirect system functionality versus direct system functionality. But when it comes time to talking about topology, I'm truly talking about all the players in the game. 
In the case of this 2025 Ford F-150, we have four individual TPMS pressure sensors that transmit radio frequencies to a radio transceiver module, and that's done wirelessly. That radio transceiver module reports information directly to the body control module using a local interconnect network. And the body control module communicates with the gateway control module over a high-speed CAN network. And then the gateway control module leverages a separate high-speed CAN network to communicate information regarding the TPMS sensors and their functionality to the instrument panel cluster. And this is how warning messages and indicators are delivered to us as drivers. Keeping that system in mind, that configuration, breakdowns anywhere in that system can and do lead to issues, and it's up to us as diagnosticians to determine where the fault lies. Because not for nothing, but it's very difficult to see where a fault lies because we can't put our hands on these components. They're internal to the tires or beneath the carpet or above headliners and such. And to disassemble things for testing would be foolish without a sense of direction first. So regarding different types of sensor faults, it could easily be one of the following. We could simply have a low tire pressure situation. Of course, the customer, the client, let the tires fall below threshold, which triggered the light, meaning there's no real fault with the system. It's doing its job and indicating one of the tires or several of the tires are low, lower than specification. Over temperature is something that exists as well, and this is typically accompanied by a low tire pressure. As the sidewall of the tire flexes during rotation, it begins to heat up and could generate high temperature within the tire, leading to a potential blowout or tire failure. Sensor that was previously installed but not calibrated or programmed properly could easily lead to a light or indicator being illuminated, meaning there's nothing really wrong with the vehicle. It's just that the sensor has not been learned yet and the vehicle hasn't been configured properly. But of course, problems with sensors themselves can and do exist, and many Many sensors fail over time as the internal batteries, which are non-replaceable, age, and the sensor begins to transmit poorly, erratically, or not at all. And another major issue that occurs within shops is that the sensor's location are not programmed to the vehicle properly, meaning during the learning procedure or the sensor programming process was done incorrectly and the sensors were learned to the wrong location. And many times after situations like a change in tire pressure or a tire rotation is performed, relearning of these positions is required, either with a scan tool or through push-button functionality within the vehicle itself. But considering the configuration we just discussed on this 2025 F-150, issues pertaining to communication bus network faults could easily be a cause of the system's inability to deliver that information properly to the cluster. In issue with an ECU itself, like the gateway control module, the body control module, the instrument panel cluster, or the radio transceiver module could easily be at fault. These are all things you and I'd have to determine as professional diagnosticians. So regarding diagnosis, doing your due diligence first to determine things like system topology and having the available tooling, we always have to realize that time is money. And accuracy is something we all should be striving for. Heck, it's our job as professionals, but efficiency is another. And having the right tools for the job certainly can make light work of a situation, but not having the right tools for the job can make for a long day. Having the right tools for the job means having the ability to perform tests that are least invasive and less time consuming. Leveraging the test results gained from using these tools should lead you to more pinpointed tests and justification for Procedures like disassembly, parts replacement, reconfiguration, programming, and learning. And that's what I like to call generalized tests. Generalized tests give me information, a ton of information, for very little time or energy invested. And I use these generalized tests to point me in the right direction. In other words, I'm not attempting to fix the vehicle when I first encounter it. I'm trying to determine plain and simply and quite easily what is okay with the vehicle. What is not wrong with it? These are things I don't have to waste any time testing, whether it's a component, a system, or a network. 
I use that as a process of elimination, allowing me to focus only on the remaining probabilities. And that's what I call pinpointed testing. So the generalized testing is information I can gain from quick scan tool functionality that will lead me to more pinpointed testing and hands-on time-consuming, in some, in some cases, procedures. So in this case, leveraging several tools from LaunchTech USA, like the X431 Torque Link Scan Tool. It's an advanced intelligent car diagnostic device. It's got a ton of storage space. It's got a really long-lasting battery. It runs fast, it's stable, and it just lasts longer off the charging station. And it also supports full scan tool functionality that we've come to rely on from many of the tools we have access to, like scanning DTCs, clearing DTCs, bi-directional control, and some special functions as well. We can perform actuator tests, coding, matching, more, and even supports newer protocols like KNFD and DOIP diagnosis protocols. Regarding TPMS, when you couple the launch X431 Torque link with their TSAP2 TPMS activation tool, you got a winning combination. The TPMS tool is easy to use, enough for do-it-yourselfers, but designed for professional technicians in mind. It's designed to activate and read and service pretty much all major OEM and aftermarket sensors. It comes with quarterly updates and allows for the newest TPMS sensors to be added in the future. So there's nothing really to worry about there. It's the perfect partner for service and TPMS systems. And it sure beats the heck out of trying new components, programming them, and learning their positions, and hoping for the best. And it's worth stating again, contrary to popular belief, not every TPMS fault requires replacement of TPMS sensors. Yes, I realize many shops out there, unfortunately, still do that. That's step one for them. They replace the sensors, program it, hope it solves the problem, and then explain to the customer that the sensors were old anyway. The batteries were probably worn out and due for replacement. I understand erring on the side of safety, but I think it's important us as professional technicians maintain our integrity and find the source of the problem first. However, when that time comes and sensors do need to replace, there's many sensors out there with several configurations, meaning we could have a vehicle that leverages one specific frequency output from one sensor and a different trim package or a different year or a different model will leverage a similar sensor but with a different frequency output making that sensor useless in another application said another way us at the shop we'd have to stock several types of sensors for different makes and different manufacturers and different trim packages and these SKUs not only cost money but they take up space and may require different tools to complete that programming initialization and pairing process but Launch also creates its own radio frequency transmitter TPMS sensors. The LTR is their own design and produce RF sensor, and it offers the best TPMS solutions for any repair shop and tire shop. It's got outstanding reliability, OE level performance, and the LTR01 can literally replace all original tire pressure sensors. You can literally copy the information from the existing sensors on the vehicle, if they still transmit, and paste them into the new replacement sensors. So it's pretty much one size fits all. Leveraging the TSAP2 TPM activation tool, we can program these to the vehicle and even determine which sensor is required because it's got its own reference library built directly into TSAP2 TPM activation tool. We can leverage the activation tool to ping the sensors, which will output its not only sensor ID, but its temperature and its pressure, as well as the frequency leverage to deliver that information. It'll allow us to determine if the sensor is functional, and if not, the process stops right there. It's proof that the sensor requires replacement. However, if the sensor is functional, if you think about it from this perspective, it eliminates it as a possible fault, leading us to test in other areas of that vehicle's topology. Perhaps there's nothing wrong with the sensor itself, but it's broadcasting at the wrong frequency. And that's the reason the vehicle can't recognize it. This is all very important information that many technicians take for granted and simply skip over. Leveraging the tool to capture the information and compare what's registered to the vehicle, we can see if each sensor was paired to the vehicle in the appropriate location compared to what's stored and in this vehicle's configuration, the body control module. So as mentioned before, we can simply perform what I label it as an inhale-exhale procedure. 
take the existing sensors, leverage the TSAP TPM tool to recover the information from the vehicle's BCM, and simply dump that information back into the new sensors when it comes time for programming, making the process effortless and seamless. But assuming a fault exists further down the line, in other words, not the sensor's ability to create it, transmit a signal, but the vehicle's ability to process it. As mentioned before, in this vehicle's configuration, we are dealing with not one, but several, in this case, three different communication bus networks. A simple DTC scan to indicate any breakdown in the communication buses is a surefire way to discover early on if there's a problem there. Being able to visit individual nodes for live data can help determine if we can at least communicate with that node and if the data stored internal to them is appropriate for the vehicle and the sensor being used. Leveraging the LaunchTech X431 Torque Link along with the TSAP2 TPM activation tool, we can easily replace the sensors, program them, and learn them into the vehicle with just a few easy to perform steps. So why is all this important to mention? Well, for one, tooling is expensive. And unless you specialize in a specific make or several makes and models, having the tools, the OE tools that is, is very costly. And seeing that return on investment takes a very long time. However, owning tools like the LaunchTech X431 Torque Link and TSAP2 TPM activation tool makes light work of the situation on many makes and models, providing coverage for almost every OE out there and for a fraction of the money spent. You'll see that return on investment quickly. So LaunchTech USA offers the best of both worlds, affordable, wide-range coverage, limited tooling required, and a quick return on investment. Great reliable tools at a great price allows me to remain efficient, accurate, and profitable. You just can't beat that. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Mastering Diagnostics. I'm Brandon Steckler, Tech Twitter and Motor Age Magazine. We'll see you next time.